Good day everyone. My name is Olajide Abdozak. I'll be taking you Ohm's Law. Before we proceed, we have the learning objective at the end of this lesson. So we should be able to describe what Ohm's Law is. Also, we will be able to recognize when Ohm's Law is applicable and when it is not. So now, um, as far back as 1826, um, a, the German physicist called Judge Simon Ohm found by experiment that for good conductors, he explained what the Ohm's law is all about and what does the law state. Um, the electric current in a given conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference applied, provided that the temperature of the conductor is and its other physical factors remain constant. So that was what the Simeon told us. And he also explained to us that the current that flows through most substances is directly proportional to the voltage V applied to it. So what Simon was trying to tell us is here is when he first demonstrated experimentally that the current in a metal wire is directly proportional to the voltage applied. So in mathematical expression, he explained to us I is directly proportional to V. This important relationship is the basis for Ohm's law. So, and this can be viewed as a cause and effect, effect relationship with voltage, the cause, and current effect. So, this is an empirical law, which is to say that it is an experimentally observed phenomenon like friction. Such a linear relationship doesn't always occur. So any material, component, or device that obeys Ohm's law, where the current through the device is proportional to the voltage applied, is known as ohmic material or ohmic component. So any material or component that does not obey Ohm's law is known as is known as a non-ohmic material or non-ohmic component. So um, in a po in a paper published in 1827, George Ohm described an experiment in which he measured voltage across the current through various simple electrical circuits containing various length of wire. So now, here we have the statement of Ohm's. So the meaning of Ohm's law statement. So Ohm's law explained to us that when the temperature of a given wire is constant and a potential difference of 1 volt, 2 volts, and 3 volts is connected in turn across the wire, the current that will flow on each occasion will be respectively as half ampere, 1 ampere, and 1 and half ampere. So from his statement, he explained that potential difference V divided by current I is then constant and equal to two units. He also defined the resistance of a wire by the ratio above, which is potential difference all over current. So, because the higher the potential difference required to maintain a given current, or the smaller the current flowing under a given potential difference, the larger is the resistance. Let me explain this. The potential, the higher the potential difference, which is our voltage, required to maintain a given current, or smaller, the smaller the current flowing under a given potential difference, which is our V, then the larger is the resistance. So, it is directly proportional. We have the symbol, the symbol which is used for resistance, which is R, and resistance is measured in ohms. So we have the symbol omega, 
which happens to be the Greek letter. So that's the symbol of ohm. One ohm is therefore the resistance of a wire when a p potential difference, which is PD of one volt, across it maintains a current of one ampere. So that's definition of resistance or definition of one ohm. So now these are the fundamental formulae. The electrical and radio engineers have particular need of formulae for calculating current, the potential difference, which is our V and resistance. And by definition, potential difference divide is um, by definition resistance is equal to potential difference by divided by current. So which means R, V, and I represent the magnitude of three quantities. So whenever we have R is equal to V all over 1, from the initial formula, which is V is equal to I, R, we can manipulate to get the value for our R, the value for our V, and the value for our I. So when do we know to apply the current formula, which is I, is equal to V divided by R? So this one might be required in estimating the right fields wire to use in an electric circuit when we have V and R which are known. Also, for us to apply the potential difference formula which is V is equal to I R, this one might be required in estimating the right voltmeter range to use in testing the radio component with a voltmeter. So, a voltmeter is an instrument used to to know the potential difference of a certain wire. So now, as I've said earlier, the unit of resistance is in ohms, while that of volt is in volt, voltage is in volt, and current is in amp. So now, let's try to look at some other unit of resistance other than what we've explained. Whenever we have one micro ohm, that one is equal to one millionth ohm, which is 10 raised to the power minus 6. We have one kilo ohm, which is the same thing as 1000 ohms, or 10 raised to the power 3 ohms. We have one mega ohm, which is equal to one million ohms, which is 10 raised to the power 6. So these are the examples of materials that obey and do not obey. Ohm's law. So whenever we have good conductors such as metals and alloys, they are the materials that obey Ohm's law. We have some circuit components that are widely used in industries. We have a component like metal rectifiers, diode radio valves, and voltage dependent resistors. So all these ones do not obey Ohm's law. So the, the method or the method used in measuring resistance. So here are the method that are used for measuring resistance. So we have voltmeter, ammeter method, resistance by substitution. We have potential divider, variation of resistance with temperature, resistances in series, and so on and so forth. So, um. Also, let's try to look at this example to enable us to apply what are the formulas that we've mentioned earlier. So, I were given from this example that a carbon resistor at room temperature, when we have 20 degrees Celsius, is attached to a 9 volt battery, and the current measured through the resistor is 3.8. 0, 0 milliamps. A. What is the resistance of the resistor measured in ohms? B. If the temperature of the resistor is increased to 60 degrees Celsius by heating the resistor, what is the current through the resistor? So, before we look at the solution, let, let me give us the strategy on how to solve this kind of example. So, um, the first thing is the resistance can be found using Ohm's law. And don't forget, I said Ohm's law states that V is equal to IR mathematically. So the resistance 
can be found using r is equal to v all over i that is we're going to make r the subject of the formula from the equation for the b part first the resistance is temperature dependent so the new resistance and the resistor as has been heated can be found using r is equal to r naught into the bracket of one plus alpha change in theta a change in temperature so close bracket the current can be found using ohm's law in the form i is equal to v all over r by making i the subject of the formula so now using ohm's law and solving for the resistance will give us the resistance at room temperature so from here now we have our r is equal to v all over i here we're going to substitute for the value of v and i as given to us in the question our r will now be equal to 9 volt divided by 3 times 10 raised power minus 3 because we have milliamps so times 10 raised power 3 is what we're going to use so from here now we have 3.0 times 10 raised power 3 ohms and which is the same thing as 10 kilo ohms so that's the answer for the a part and for the b part the resistance the resistance as at 60 degrees Celsius can be found using the formula which is r is equal to r naught into the bracket of 1 plus alpha change in temperature where is the temperature coefficient for carbon so our alpha is temperature coefficient and is for carbon is equal to minus 0 0.005 we're going to substitute all the value so here now our r will now be equal to 3 times 10 raised to the power 3 into the bracket of 1 minus 0 0.005 into the bracket of 60 degrees Celsius minus 20 degrees Celsius. So everything here will now give us 2.94 kilo ohms. So um, don't forget, we're going to calculate the current through the heated resistor. So from here now, we're going to make I the subject of the formula from V is equal to I R. So here now we're going to have... 9.0 volt which is our voltage from the inception so divided by the new resistance given to us which is 2.94 times 10 raised power 3 ohms so by manipulating here we're going to have 3.06 times 10 raised power minus 3 and don't forget to have this one we can convert it to milliamps which would now give us 3.06 milliamps so now let's look at the summary of what we've done so far so we explain ohm's law and ohm's law gives the relationship of current voltage and resistance so also we stated ohm's law the ratio of potential driven divided by current is a constant for a given conductor provided the physical condition of the conductor such as temperature remain constants so that's what ohm's law is all about also don't forget i said i is inverse is directly proportional to v which gives us i is equal to v all over r for the current for the voltage i is equal to uh, v is equal to i r then for the resistance v is r is equal to volt all over current and the unit of r is ohm v is in volts and i is in current so and so on and so forth let's try to look at this exercise so it's very simple and it's very straightforward so what we have to calculate here, what we have to do here is the voltage supply to your house vary as v of t is equal to v max sine 2 pi ft so if a resistor is connected across this voltage will ohm's law which is v is equal to i are still valid so it is very simple well um, we're given we, we've been given v so from here now we're going to manipulate and just solve it so it is very simple and for all inquiries and answers so don't forget to send the answers and inquiries to the email below jimosmith at edufos.ng thank you